Hello and welcome to Russ Plays Games. My name is Russ, and as you can see, we're sitting in front of my paint station. And, uh, well, here's RC. I told you in my last um, painting video that I would show her off. And as you can see, I had to go out and get a much darker pink. Um, I went ahead and purchased... See if I can find it right off the bat here. There you are. Oh, just kind of trying to remember. It's a pink eraser is the color that I got, and uh, it seems to work very, very well for her. Um, according to her um, picture here on the back, she actually looks really a lot like it now. So, um, yeah, and then I, I put the uh, Autobot symbol right there on her chest, and uh, yeah, um, there's a couple things that I could still paint, like there's a couple of little parts um, right, like right above where the the, um, the pink sort of, I guess you could call it her crotch area, there's the black, um, on here there's like a few little buttons and, you know, lights and stuff, um, I can still get those, but I just actually sealed her. Um, I just actually threw the matte varnish on her. So she's pretty much done. Um, so honestly, I can say I'm pretty happy with it. She's just going to go up on the shelf and be on display for me, um, which I think is pretty cool. I, I really do. I think that this is kind of neat that they did this. And uh, thank you, WizKids, um, for making Transformers that we can all get behind. Um, so, as you can see from my paint station, a couple things have changed. Um, since I started doing this, and I, I started kind of going out and doing some things, um, I got into the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game. Um, now it's called Middle Earth strategy battle game, um, and it, it grew out of a love for um, these guys. These are um, Lord of the Rings Combat Hex um, tradable miniatures game. This was a game that was made um, back in, oh, I want to say, gosh, um, like it was right around the time of, um, well, right around the time of Lord of the Rings. Sabretooth Games was the creator of these. And then Wizards, uh, not Wizards, but Games Workshop bought out Sabretooth Games and basically issued a cease and desist order on these, which kind of sucked. Um, but um, since then, I've collected a bunch of those, and then um, I just recently bought some of the uh, miniatures. And so this is um, a uh, an orc, a Moria Goblin, um, and, uh, uh, I have a little shield here, and so I'm kind of painting this up to kind of understand, and as you can see, I've got, like, another, uh, Moria Goblin fighter from the Combat Hex, and then I have a Moria Goblin Archer, which their helmets are pretty much the same, if you can kind of see that. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm using these as sort of references for these, Okay. Um, I might do some of these in the future. If you'd like to see some of those, um, I'd definitely be able to do that. Um, one of the things that I also want to do today um, is show you that uh, there are little, um, uh, little parts that go together to create little, little wall obstructions. Okay? And so basically, what the point of, of having these low walls is line of sight blockers. Um, you know, you can use them to hide troops behind. You can use them to uh, shoot people. Um, and there's like a whole bunch of, there's like three different kinds. Um, if, you, if you go out and you look at the, the original Lord of the Rings strategy battle game from 2001, when it first came out, Fellowship of the Ring boxed set had um, 24 Moria Goblin, Moria Goblins, okay, um, that, you know, had these, they had the, um, the shields, um, 
as you can kind of see, there's some shields there. There's also some Urukai shields because I got the two towers game. Um, and then uh, there was 24 of those, and uh, eight of them have spears, eight of them have swords and shields, and eight of them have bows. Okay, hence the reason why I have these guys here. Um, and then there was the last alliance between men and elves, okay, which was the force that went against Sauron, the deceiver, um, on Mount, on the slopes of Mount Doom, where Isildur cut the ring from Sauron's hand, right? Um, so that's the reason why I have the elf here, and then I also have a Gondorian fighter over there somewhere that I have yet to bring over here, because I'm going to paint these kind of one at a time. I'm going to kind of get the flavor for painting them, because they're kind of smallish. They're, they're actually a lot smaller than I really thought they were going to be. Um, so they're still technically 25 millimeter scale, but they're a little different, okay? Um, and so um, I'm going to paint up some of this, because I've already painted up there's one that's a little bit taller, and it has like an archway on it. And then right up here in the corner, there's a little piece of wood where you can actually um, stick a person on there. So my idea is paint all of these up, you know, and have them to play. Because a buddy of mine um, just recently got into gaming, um, kind of 2018, 2019. I started doing a, a guy's kind of like night where... A bunch of my friends and I, guy friends and I, would sit down and we'd play various role-playing games, board games, whatever we felt like playing at the time. And um, while we were on the subject of playing that, we were kind of having fun and, and you know, doing things. And we, we kind of talked to each other and we kind of, you know, decided that maybe we should, uh, you know, try to get, um, you know, something else started. Um, and so I've been trying to get them involved in Warlord, which is the reason why I bought this guy and her and, you know, Judas and all those kind of things is because I've been trying to get people into Warlord. But beyond that, my friend is a huge fan of Lord of the Rings. Okay. And like, we've seen the movies together like hundreds of times and, you know, we love to quote from the movies and I bought this, um, boxed set called um, Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth, okay? And that particular Lord of the Rings, um, uh, that particular, uh, or, no, it's called Quest of Mount Doom, sorry. Journeys in Middle-Earth is the Fantasy Flight version. Um, Quest of Mount Doom was the Games Workshop version. And Journeys in Middle-Earth is more like a, um, you, you, take a, you take a member of the Fellowship, or you take... A series of members of the fellowship and you have and they can have little people and they follow along and they do different things and you can have them do things and so and, and also around that time that I bought that game I also got this guy Gandalf um, and this is from the the game as well um, the the Middle Earth strategy battle game and I um, and I painted the the actual metal figure because this is metal. Um, the actual metal figure of Gandalf that I have is is in that um, uh, Quest of Mount Doom, and I painted him well. The plastic versions that they put in that game are kind of crappy. Okay, they're they're made to be just you know very quick and very easy, but they they lack a lot of detail. And his new wife. My friend's new wife is a huge Legolas Orlando Bloom fan, okay? She loves Orlando Bloom. Um, she loves Johnny Depp. She loves Pirates of the Caribbean. She loves Lord of the Rings. And so every time we play, she plays Legolas. So one of my reasonings for buying into Lord of the Rings, um, Fellowship of the Ring and, and the Two Towers and that kind of stuff, was to get some figures and be able to sit down and play. And so that's one of the reasons why, like, these guys, you know, like I have this guy out is because I painted up a High Elf Swordsman, okay? And the High Elf Swordsman had, um, you know, um, I, I painted him, got him based, I've got him, you know, looking hot. And I also bought some measuring uh, things that look like the different weapons of Middle-earth. So you've got, like, Gandalf's staff, and it's, like, 12 inches long, and you have... Um, the Witch King's sword, and it's like 10 inches long, and you have um, uh, um, Anduril, Flame of the West, um, 
you know, it's like eight, like, I don't know, six, eight inches long. And, and so then they go down to like, you have things like four inches and like the Morgul blade that the, the witch king used to stab Frodo with is like three inches. And then you have a little coin that has two sides. It's got the, the tree of Gondor on one side and then on the other side, it's got the eye of Sauron and it's a priority marker. So every, every turn you, uh, you roll for priority and whoever has priority wins ties. Okay. And so looking at this and kind of like seeing some of these different, you know, things that they've done that, 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 that they've done. Um, so I have the entire fellowship because quest to Mount doom gives you the entire fellowship as it was in the fellowship of the ring. You've got Gandalf, you've got, um, all four hobbits, um, Frodo, Sam, Merry and Pippin, you have Aragorn, you have Boromir, you have Legolas and you have Gideon. And so, um, so having all of those, um, means that, you know, my friend and his wife are going to be playing the good side. I'm going to be playing the evil side. So I went ahead and bought alerts and Ugluk from Games Workshop. It's on the way. And as soon as that comes in, I'll paint that because that one's going to be fun, especially the alerts, um, because he's got the, he's got the, uh, the handprint on his face, you know, where, where the, where the guy took the white paint and like, you know, put it over his face and then, you know, releases it. Um, and then, uh, and then Ugluk is the Lieutenant, the one that was like the slices off the, the goblin's head and is like, look like it meets back on the menu boys. Um, so a lot of fun. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun painting that guy. Um, that being said, Let's jump into this. I know it's been about 12 minutes that I've been kind of rambling on here. Um, and then, oh, and then I also bought um, a set of ruins from Osgiliath, okay, which are similar to these type of ruins, but it has more um, areas to be able to stand on. So instead of just being a wall, it's actually got like a wall with like a, a parapet below it, you know, so it's got like a wall and then it's got a platform right here and then it has gaps in the wall where you'll be able to stand and shoot out of um and then it's got stairs and it's got some different things um it's got a couple of statues so it's it's gonna be fun i'm i'm really looking forward to sitting down and just building the hell out of this thing um when it finally comes in so i'm excited to kind of officially join the lord of the rings community i've been watching zorpa zorp online um he and like a whole bunch of terrain builders did a massive Minas Tirith project. And then he had like a couple of people come and do a gigantic battle on that Minas Tirith set. I mean, it, and he lives down in Australia. He's amazing. Okay. Locky is, is absolutely amazing. He might live in England. I can't remember exactly where he's from, but anyway, Locky's amazing. Go follow him. Um, another, another one that I watch is Eric's Hobby Workshop. He was one of the, um, terrain builders for that project. In fact, I think out of all the projects, no offense to the other builders because they were, they were terrific as well. But I think in my opinion, Eric's was probably the best out of them because the way that he builds and weathers terrain was amazing. Like he went in and like put little, you know, I mean, he like scoured the film footage, got still frames printed them out and then like use that to kind of like help him kind of like weather the actual stones so that it looked like it was actually straight out of the film. I was floored when I saw it. I was like, Oh my God, that is absolutely amazing. <clears throat> now, before you roast me in the comments and say, Hey, I thought you said those were the worst. Yes, I did. But um, even though it's the worst, it still works pretty well. You just have to make sure that when you do it, I, I bought flag red, um, from Apple barrel. Yeah, I know. Flame me in the comments. You guys are going to love me. You guys are going to hate me. So it doesn't matter, but basically, um, <clears throat> oh yeah. And then I bought, um, some new, um, brushes. I've got this one's a 20 zero. As you can see, it's got a nice point on it. Um, it's already kind of like the tips already kind of like bent on it a little bit. 
And I showed this off um, very briefly in the video that I did, but this was the pack of acrylic um, uh, brushes that I got. Um, it's gold Taclon. There's a one, three, and five round brush. There's a five eighths inch, 16 millimeter flat brush. There are um, two, six, and 10 shader brushes. And then a three, zero, two, zero, and zero detail brushes, which are these right here. And the reason why I bought this pack was specifically for these four brushes right here, okay? Because these are your detail brushes. Now these, these you can use for, um, like I've used these. You can use them for when you're doing this kind of work, okay? When you're base coating, your miniatures, your terrain, anything like that, these brushes are pretty good for that. But you want the detail brushes. You want the ones with the small tips, okay? And anytime you can find a detail brush, because here's the thing. You buy this for 20 bucks at a Hobby Lobby, right? Um, if you go to, if you buy a brush like this um, from another um, place, what ends up happening is, you know, you, you go down and you buy just like a normal brush. And I mean, one of them I can use is this one right here. Um, this, this was a, a 20 zero spotter brush, um, from painters touch, something like that. And it's, this cost me like, I don't know, like five or six bucks for just one brush. So finding Finding brushes like this is a good deal because you end up getting a good amount of brushes that you can use and you're, you're going to end up using them for a while before they split and break. And then like this one, you'll end up using it like I do for gluing things and other stuff like that. So um, coming back now, I know it's been a while since we've done this. Um, I'm going to take this flag red. It's a little bit bright, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is, oh yeah, I also got a new, uh, palette, tray palette. Put this guy right in there. It's a little bit tougher. All right, there we go. I'm going to have to go back and clean them up just a bit. But the, really, the reason why I got this big red brush was to make sure that I could get this going down his back. Okay. Or this, this red paint, I should say. Not big red brush. This red paint. I got it because I wanted to make sure that I could get it going down his back. And as you can see, it's going on very, very thin. It looks... It looks right now, it looks very, because it's wet, it looks very red. But when you get done, it's going to look very, very, um, it's not going to look as red. Because as you, as you spread it around and it thins out, it tends to, it, it tends to show the black through it. Um, and so I know I said don't, don't grab the apple barrel, but... You know, sometimes I don't listen to my own advice. And it's not like I'm going to take it back now that I've opened it. And I hadn't uploaded in a while because I've been sick and I've had some other obligations and some various things like that. So I figured I might as well just go ahead and film the video. Get it posted up for you guys so that you don't go, wait a minute, what happened to you? You disappeared on us, my friend.
Sorry for the awkward silence. I'm just concentrating because I have a lot of really small spaces I'm trying to push this paint into. Um, and then this helps when I don't talk. So sorry about that. Um, and you'll notice I have these guys um, back on their bases. So I basically stuck them down and then I let them just sit for a while and uh, you know just make sure that I know um, you know what they're because I'm letting the paint or I'm letting the glue kind of cure okay um, because the the glue tends to if it's not properly cured it tends to break and um, that's one of the bad things about PVA glue but it's a lot better than the uh, testers glue that I had. Um, so when I get done here, um, I'm going to grab, um, when this turns off at 35 minutes, because this one's going to kind of be a long video, um, I will leave this guy for a few, and then um, we'll come back, and we will take on the wonderfully beautiful Christiana here. See if we can't paint her up a little bit. There we go. Now it's starting to look a little brighter. I probably didn't need that much red paint. My bad. Sometimes you do that. Um, a lot of times, if I know I'm going to be... Uh, really really painting a ton of figures with the same color um, then I will uh, I will make sure that I put um, and then I'll make sure that you know I, I kind of paint all of those figures that I'm going to use that color for on those okay um, one other thing that I did get, and I will show this here off just in a couple of seconds here. You probably noticed it just kind of sitting there in the background. I don't know, maybe not, but uh, basically, um, when I uh, showed off the grave stone markers here that I'm going to use as my um, casualty markers for my necropolis army. Um, I then took a look at, because um, I was kind of wondering if there was something that I could use from Reaper that would be similar to that. Um, and, you know, be able to uh, find it you know, fairly quickly and, and cheaply um, so that I could use it in a game. And I did. I'll show it off here in just one second. Let me just finish up getting his cloak here, getting this little part of his cloak. Now, one of the things that I would recommend when you do something like this, okay, um, if you go ahead and shade, which, I mean, I would recommend you do anyway, but if you shade, um, get, um, use, after you shade in the recesses and stuff of like the folds, go back, take the darker color, highlight the folds, because you can see each individual fold. You highlight each individual fold and the cloak too, and then come back with this one and just do a very swift line right along in here, just right along each fold, okay? 
because that will make it look artificial, like the light is hitting it in such a way that it is bringing them up, okay? Um, so, now that we have him done, Alrighty. And as I was getting kind of low on my uh, burgundy, I purchased a true burgundy from Folk Art. Now, let's grab the tactics. I've been waiting to do this step for a while now. <laughs> um, basically, what I've been wanting to do with this guy, actually, I'm going to do it first. Before we do that, I'm going to paint his. Paint his hand red fabric, sort of like a red leather, because he is the leader of the Crimson Knights after all, so he should have the crimson color kind of running all over him, like this. And I didn't want him to just be the normal, oh look, I'm just colored this way. I wanted him to look different. I wanted him to have a sort of panache, if you know what I mean. Okay, then get right back in here. Okay, so what I made sure to do was get way back deep in the recesses of his hand, okay? We'll get way back in there by the shield, and then I got his entire hand right here, okay? And the easiest way to look at that is, is um, as he's... You know, as he is a, you know, crimson knight, okay, he's going to have crimson stuff. He's going to have red things, okay, red armaments that are going to make him stand out from the rest. Okay, and I wanted this guy to be able to stand out from the rest. Because I want him to look like a like a new like a you know like a leader you know where he's he's out there doing stuff that is completely different and another way to sort of get that there's like um, red back in the folds is <clears throat> so up up here I painted just a tiny bit of red right up along the black and then I painted the sleeve red and then what I do is I come back and I make sure to really highlight the outside of the sleeve okay make it super red and keep the very very the part that I first painted very light and transparent and what that does is it just takes away that um, that part of the um, you know, it, 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 the, as the paint dried, it dried very uh, translucent. And so there's a hint of red, but there's still a lot of black showing through. That's one way that you can kind of cheat the system in a way um, to show that there's a lot of depth. Um, you know, it just kind of depends on uh, how much you're actually looking for when you do it. Um, 
And, you know, some people, they, they can do it 80 to 100 times better than I ever could. So, you know, I mean, if you see it differently on a different channel and you can replicate it, go for it. But as for me, I'm not that good of a pro painter. Yeah, I'm not a pro painter. Never have been, never will be, probably. Um, oh, one last thing I want to do with this guy. I'm going to paint this tongue. This tongue red. I thought about painting it, but I think I'm going to paint the face in more of a metallic crimson, and I think I'm going to keep the uh, the like the eyes and the tongue looking uh, more natural. So it'll look more unsettling that way. Like here's this tongue that's just like sticking out of this. It almost looks like it could be someone's tongue, if you know what I mean. This is the Necropolis, after all. I mean, we're dealing with a bunch of sadistic killers here. They're not the overlords, but they definitely are... Uh, <laughs> they definitely are uh, much, much different. So, in about four minutes here, um, the footage is going to cut out, and then I'll, I'll come back, and um, I'm going to um, move on to... Uh, um, the the battle nun here um and so i'll just kind of go on to that um and then i will also kind of show off some of the uh lord of the rings stuff that i've painted so far and some of that stuff too and then we'll just kind of continue on with our paint and everything so yeah that red tongue does look really good um so yeah i mean I think one of the best things to do when you're looking at something like this is um, when it's almost monochrome, <laughs> um, what you definitely want to do is make sure that you're um, varying the colors ever so slightly because then it doesn't look all the same. Okay, It doesn't, it doesn't just have one, one color from head to toe. He's got different colors. He's going to have different things showing up. And, you know, a lot of that comes out in the way that it looks. Okay. And so, we will see here that... See, the thing about the Crimson Knights is that they, um, they serve Judas Bloodspire. And um, since Judas is going to kind of be the cornerstone of my army now, um, I thought that this would be a really good um, opportunity to kind of show this off and, and really kind of see what, um, what it looks like and, you know, how they work and all that kind of stuff. Now, a good thing to do um, when you're looking at various things like he's got us he's got a symbol on his chest here um and one of the things that you can do um is definitely uh um you can paint different you can paint the symbol in different colors if you wish and i'll probably end up doing that and i'll show that off when i get to that point but for right now Biggest thing I wanted to do was just kind of get him uh, well, pretty much done. So, and this is just about to flip itself off. So, as soon as it does, I will um, stop painting. And when I come back, um, we'll kind of talk a little bit about Lord of the Rings. And then we'll go on to um, the other gal. Oh, and don't forget... He does have some scale mail down here in the front. Don't forget that. It's very important. <laughs> very important step. Don't miss that. Otherwise, he'll look kind of weird with this like black scale mail right in the middle of it. People will be like, "What? What? What is that? What? What are, what are you trying to do? I don't know. Forgot he had scale mail. Oops."
And we'll see you in a minute. Actually, for you, it'll be a second. and it's not turned off yet. Usually when I got down to that, it turned itself off. And now... Alrighty, well... And welcome back. Alright, so, um... I just kind of wanted to show you, this is the high elf that I painted. Okay, and as you can see, very similar to the guy um you know i went ahead and you know threw some shade on him in places and then went back and lightened him up and then uh, highlighted his cloak and then i put the basic materials on because these have a, a large front base so i went ahead and put some tufts of uh of grass and then i put the um the normal uh, uh flocking this up here so I put a couple of these in the front, and then I put this on the whole base. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, and I even kind of, you know, did up his um, sword a little bit there. Um, you can kind of see it in the light. It's, um, you know, I made sure to, to do that, and I went back and just kind of just kind of touched it up just a tiny bit here and there. Um, so, you know, when you have... When you have the opportunity, and then these are the measurers that I was talking about. Like here's Gimli's walking axe, and then here's the measuring on the back. This one's five inches. So what's nice about this is that if you have to move something, like for instance, um, with my little goblin guy here, he moves five inches. So what I would do is is I would lay it down on the table, and I would lay it down on the front, and then I would move him to there. And there's your five inches, if that makes sense, because that's five inches. And then what I did was, is I, I, I highlighted these in blue to make them stand out, in blue metallic, so that they would stand out on the table. Um, and then, like, here's the Morgul blade. This one's three inches. Um, and as you can see, I kind of left it black with just a little bit of some highlights, some silver highlights, um, actually gunmetal highlights. I, I did the whole thing here and here with gunmetal, and then I went back and kind of touched up um, around the edges with black. Um, here's the, the Witch King's sword. This guy um, is 10 inches, and as you can kind of see, I colored this one in um, this... Uh, uh, privateer press radium platinum color um, and then the blade is in the same um, steel or gunmetal that that this one is because um, it has it has kind of a bluish hue so it has a little bit different almost oldish rustic appearance and then I dry brushed up here where it's kind of pockmarked and pitted so that it makes it look more uh, old and uh yeah and then i went back and kind of touched up a little bit of the black inside the platinum handle there and then touched up around the handle so there's there's that one um here's andriel flame of the west um as you can see the uh the runes on the inside of the blade are um i just dry brushed that um and then i went and did the gunmetal here and here and then again, touched up around the handle. And so it makes it look like, you know, the actual sword inside um, Lord of the Rings. And then um, this is Glamdring. I forgot about this one. This is, uh, um, this is the sword held by our good friend Gandalf here on, on this miniature. It's right up here, right by, um, it's right there. Right by his, uh, right by the horse's head there. Um, in fact, the actual, um, the actual figure, the actual metal figure is holding it. Um, you know, he's, he's got it. And again, um, I, I colored the blade in lead belcher, 
um, and then colored the handle and then the pommel or the hilt and then the pommel in uh, and then I just kind of colored this little jewel blue just just to give it a little flare and then this one's a six inch um, marker um, this one's eight inch and then uh, sting again dry brush dry brush um, and then uh, yeah I just kind of colored the um, colored this up, colored the pommel, and then I colored the, the handle in kind of a brownish color because that's what it is. And uh, just to give it a little bit of a visual interest, I left some black showing through. Um, I forgot to go back and add some blue highlights to it before I sealed it, so my bad. I should have done that. And then here is Gandalf the White's staff. This one's a 12-inch, as you can see. <laughs> It's a long one. It's huge, but this one was a lot of fun. Um, what's neat is is that it's very, very uh, sturdy because um, just the handle, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of a um, uh, thing right here where it separates um, because the head and the um, and the, the shaft um, came in two separate pieces on the sprue, and so. But yeah, this is the longest one. This is 12 inches. So if you had a, you know, a horse or something like that, you'd move 10 or 12 inches. You'd use something like this. Um, so yeah, I mean, you generally, you know, when you lay them down on the table, you're you're probably going to lay them, you know, so that they so that they lay in such a fashion so that you can use it as a, you know, as a guide. But yeah, I made it so that you could see it from the table, and then. Here's the priority marker. This is the evil side. So this is the Eye of Sauron. Um, it's actually it's that way. And then it has the script that's on the ring around it. So I put that and then I colored it gold. And then on this side, you have the tree of Gondor. And then again, you have the script of the ring. And then I colored this one in silver. Um, and actually, it was that radiant platinum. Um, I colored the, the outside and inside circles and then the tree. And then I used um, the uh, ultramarine blue color um, to paint the middle. I just painted this gray, and then I painted it over so that it would, so that you'd have it. So if good side wins, then you leave this side up on the table. If the evil side wins, then you leave this side up on the table. So it's pretty neat. I like that. It's a handy little way of keeping track of priority. And so, all right. Well, we are going to move on to um, our little lady, um, Christiana, here. And I found this um, warm bisque color. And I'm going to try to use this rather than the sun-kissed peach, because the sun-kissed peach seems to be a little bit too light for me. This one has more of that kind of a pinkish hue that you'd want because it it matches my skin color a little bit better and that's that's usually what I'm looking for and look it doesn't matter what skin color you have okay if you have whatever skin color you have go to the paint store grab a piece of paint and hold it next to you and if it looks very similar to your skin color use it who cares what skin color you put on people you don't have to have elves that are pale faced you don't have to have things that are different like I had to go down because, I mean, the orcs have this kind of, or the goblins have this kind of like pasty green skin. And so I went down and found this faded jade, okay, at, at Hobby Lobby. And I put it on my orc because I'm testing it out to see if it works. And if it works, guess what? I'm going to use it on every single one of them. If it doesn't work, well, then I'm probably going to go down and find a different color and see how it works. So if this isn't, to your liking, go find a skin color. Go find a paint that matches the skin color that you want, okay? Doesn't have to be this. This is what I use, okay? Because it's what I am. It's how I paint, okay? And no one ever said that you couldn't have elves of different skin color. Nowhere in fantasy does it say that elves have to be the, the, the Caucasian skin, okay? No one. No one ever said that. You paint it how you want it, okay? 
And that's my that's my only thing is with this hobby. Okay, paint it how you want it. And if somebody bitches and moans, tell them to fuck off. Okay, that's my thing. All right. So. All right. Because I just don't want to hear somebody come onto my comment section and start bitching and moaning because I I build my characters a certain way, okay? It's fantasy. You can do whatever you want. recently obtained a uh, well the battle tome for um, for the overlords faction in warlord it was a very fascinating read makes me actually now want to build an overlords army <laughs> uh don't you just love when that happens? You start building an army, you get mostly done, then you read and you go, you know, I think I should be wearing a glove. Fortunately, I'm trying to think if there's any other way I want to put some uh, flesh on her. It. it doesn't look like it though. Alrighty. Unfortunately, she doesn't really have a whole lot. So, here's what I'm going to do, since I have a little bit of red over there that I'm still in the process of using. Um, I'm going to make her a redhead. And yeah, I am one too. But, that being said, I'm going to make her a redhead because I already have it. Okay? That's what I'm saying. If you're using it, if you put it too much on there instead of just letting it go to waste try to use it if you can so I'm gonna pull this out come on sometimes you gotta get in the middle and kind of pull right. the biggest thing is don't want to do. When it starts to dry, it'll start to develop a little bit of a film on it. You don't want to use that film to paint because it'll just glop. Um, you want the paint to stay where it's at. I like to rotate the hair color on my models, on my female models that I paint. Um, so I might start one with a, yeah, maybe a blonde, and then I might go to another one that has more of a, um, might go to one that has a, 
different, you know, like maybe a brunette. Do some black hair, do some different hair. You just, I just kind of rotate it around. And that's however you want to paint it, too. I mean, you know, as I said before, you know, you don't want to just, just be limited by what I'm doing or what somebody tells you or, hell, even what the books tell you to do. I mean, you know. I, I painted Judas, he's a little bit different than the rest of the guys, um, you know, than, than what they painted him, and, you know, I mean, I, because I wanted him to look a certain way, and, uh, you know, when, when I want a character to look a certain way, well, hell, <laughs> I'm going to do it that way, I don't care, because, again, it's fantasy, and it's, and it's, if you're building an army, it's your army, so it should be what you want it to look like, okay? So if you want it to look different, then make it look different. Because, like, native, um, like, Taltanes are described as being tall, kind of bronze-skinned. But, like, say, for instance, the Crusaders, the Crusaders came from outside um, Taltos. Now, they do have Taltanes in their ranks. But they're not necessarily, um, like, 100%, uh, you know, like, they have some Taltanes in their army. But you could rationalize that a lot of them are armored and that kind of stuff. So if you don't want to try to find a, a kind of a bronzy skin color um, or try to make one, um, then just rationalize that the Taltanes are the ones in armor. Um However you want to do it. Again, it's up to you. But um, And then the Kamsen, uh, which are the... Uh, um, the the Kamsen are the, uh, the people from... Um, uh, gosh. <laughs> from south of the, uh, the Bitterbile River, um, the Nefsakar. That's what it is, the Nefsakar. Okay, there are Kamsens. And you can use, if you have some mercenaries, some of them are Kamsen, okay? Um, so you can, and they're like of a darker skin. They're they're kind of a cross between like an Egyptian and an African, okay? Like like they're not quite like full-on dark-skinned African, but they're not quite like very light-skinned Egyptian. They're like right in between, okay? So... Again, you can go for either look, and you can try to get right in between, or if you're like, well, you know what, I I think they should be this way, then you put them that way, okay? So it just all depends on what you want, okay? And so you just have to go and think, I want my characters to look this way, and that's the way they look, and you don't let anybody tell you different, Okay? So, now what? Let's get to this point. <laughs> and then I go, um, what do I want them to look like? Um, female. Hmm. Okay. I don't remember what the description in the Crusaders book said. Um, a lot of times, um, if you go to like Reaper Mini, you can find, especially in Warlord, you can find some of the ones have been painted, and some of them will be in like the regular rule book like if you get the first edition rule book you can open it up right to the end of the kind of the first section right before the rules and you will see that they have some painted examples of what these characters look like like there's one guy um he's a cleric of the overlords his name is balthon and he has a little um skull on a chain and i thought Man, that would be awesome to paint because they have like this like green kind of like smoke like coming out of the eyes and like out of the mouth of the skull and like out of the top of the skull. And I thought, man, 
you know, they just painted it regular, and I think they painted the eyes kind of like an orangish, kind of a blaze orangish color, kind of like, kind of like that. And so I was like, hmm, what to do, what to do? <laughs> All right, well, get me some bright blue. I'm going to get me some white, some gold. So a good thing to do, get your paints ready. Think about what you want your paints to look like. I'm going to grab some blue metallic. Because she does have, like, a breastplate. So I want to make sure that that gets done. She has this sort of a, a flowing, sort of like veils, and, like, she's got some little... Um, parts down the back that I think I can paint in gold. So I always kind of look, she has a crown that I think I want to have look gold, okay? Um, because even though she's um, part of the three, the, that's the, the main three gods of Taltos um, and that, that the chroniclers um, work with, um, you know, she is Mother Superior. She is the one that, you know, kind of controls, you know, how people think and act and, you know, I mean, about some of that kind of stuff. And so, um, you know, what we're going to do here is, and this will probably take a couple of different sessions to get her fully painted, but the biggest thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get these swords painted up. They're very quick. These are just, just easy. Painting them. Painting the metallics is probably one of the easiest things you can do on a miniature, just because it's just super, super simple. Paint this puppy up and just get it done. You want to make sure when you're getting things like swords and blades and you know, mace heads, if you're doing it that way, um, you want to make sure you try to get it in all the nooks and crannies and make sure that make sure that it carries over um, from one side to the other. Because if you paint one side one way and you paint the other side the other way, and when you turn the miniature away from the opponent, they're going to be like, wait a minute, why is that sword all painted weird? Okay, it's going to look wrong because... Humans love symmetry. We 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 thrive on a symmetry of um, of things, and if we don't see that symmetry, we tend to kind of our mind tends to kind of go, "What did I just see?" <laughs> so, just want to make sure that you're getting it all. And again, in this step. You can be a little bit crazy with it, but you don't want to do too much because if you get you get too much paint everywhere, then it's going to have kind of a metallic sheen to it when you go to put other paints over it, especially more transparent paints like, say, for instance, white. White is going to look very, very wrong over metallic paint. It just does. Um, and that's just the white over the metallic. That's not, like, other colors are pretty, pretty good about that. Let me see here. That one there. Okay. And right there. Darg. That happens. Get your butt in there. Thank you. All right. And you can see the uh, the her cloak kind of comes up and covers a little bit of the sword right here. I ended up painting just a tiny bit of it on there. Not that big of a deal. Okay. Um, so, you know, again, it's not a huge deal. Don't fret. Don't be like, ah, what the hell? It's okay if you screw up a little bit. As they say, we'll fix it in post. 
Okay. Think. Do this. Do this one last bit. I'm gonna try to do something. Don't know if it's gonna work or not. We're gonna try something. Come on. Okay. I want this to look like a veil. So what I'm wondering is, do I take teensy weensy bit of this red, paint it very, very light, almost darky dark, translucent. Very, very diffuse. You see what I'm doing here? I'm trying to make this very, very diffuse. Because I want it to look like there's a little bit of red hair underneath this veil. I don't know if this is going to work or not. We'll see. Now, we take the blue and mix it with the white. And now, kind of worked, tiny bit maybe. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah, it's tough to get translucency, transparency. All right. If you're wondering, I'm putting on a coating of white because I think the main part of her outfit is going to be white because she is a battle nun. Okay, so they are technically pledged to the service of the three gods. And so I want the white to kind of be more of like a purity color for them. And I think I might make up a little bit more of that faded blue color to um, to put underneath. It's almost like there's like a bluish undergarment inside the cloak or inside the sleeve. Could work, I guess. All right. So, best way to do this that I found, we want to mix paints. Okay. I know it was kind of hard because I had this guy in the way. I'm just up there. Okay. I pull. Bit of the first color because that's a strong one. Okay, so with blue, and then I grab the white and I start mixing. Okay, and then what I try to do is try to add in so I make that kind of a skyish bluish color. Okay, and 
That way, I get that nice bluish color. And what I'm going to do is paint a line right down the inside, right like that. Okay, so that it looks like the inside of her, of that has a little bit of a bluish tint to it, has a bluish sky blue color to it, okay? So it's like the inside has maybe a bit of the veil color in with it, if that makes sense, okay? And that's probably, in my opinion, one of the easiest ways um, to do that. Because it gives it that that sort of um, that sort of color that you're looking for. Now I'm trying to be careful. I know it's not it's not working as well as I thought it might be, but. Basically, what I've been trying to do is make it look. Um, she has these little um, gold, or well, I guess they could be construed as gold. I'm gonna paint them more just the blue color. But she's got this like kind of a bluish color, or this blue. She's got these over over her forearm. She has like a little design that kind of comes over like this and then it ends in like a little point, okay? And it'll be more apparent when I actually get the blue on it. But basically, she's got two of them over like this and then she's wearing a gauntlet that comes back to about here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the white paint to meet in the middle of all these. And then I'm trying to get them around the sides and then down the whole thing, okay? It's hard to explain because since the model's black and I don't really have a good... Um, uh, light here for you to be able to see it um you know she's she's definitely it, it's there it you you know it once you see it and and i'm just trying to get the colors in there the best i possibly can for some odd reason still got a little bit of that blue color on the brush ah. yep, yep. all right Come here, white. And I'm sure that, you know, like if you look at some reference photos, I'm pretty sure that her, um, thing there is going to be like probably made in gold um you can kind of see them right here these little black lines that's what i'm trying to um get around with the color okay because the color tends to be very uh um yeah, because the the color I want it I want that to be blue, but I don't want it to be so much so that it, um, you know. But I want to be able to make sure that um, that the white gets in there first, because I don't want to um, have to paint one color, paint the other color, paint one color, paint the other color. It drives me insane when they do stuff like that. It's like, die. <laughs> All right. This will probably be the last one that I do, because when I get done with this, it's going to be over an hour. So, um, yeah, so basically what I'm going to do, paint this blue on there. Darg. Damn it. Don't you do that to me. Don't you do that to me.
but basically that's the effect that I'm going for, okay, to where she has the blue on, and then there's a little bit of blue in the sleeve, but she's got the white, that means kind of purity, and the blue up at the top for the Crusaders and for the, the three gods. That's basically what I'm going for. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and call it here. I'm probably going to work on her a little bit more um, tonight since I already have these two colors on here. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of try to finish up her gown a little bit more. And then once I get back, I can kind of talk a little bit more about that. But I'll get this posted in the next couple of days. And uh, hopefully, you know, I'll be able to, um, I, during the day, I may or may not be able to get to filming a video. I'll try. Um, I've been having a lot of um, you know, issues trying to get things filmed and trying to do different things. But anyway, smash that like button, hit subscribe, drop a comment below, let me know what you think of this um, paint tutorial. Has this been interesting for you? Um, is there, uh, would you like to see me paint up some of these? Would you like to see me paint up some of these? So I have, I have two sets of these. Um, video just cut out there really fast. Um, which is funny because I didn't do that before. Um, but anyway, so uh, basically, um, so smash that smash that like button, hit subscribe, drop a comment below, let me know what you think, and uh, we'll take it from there. So this has been Russ for Russ Plays Games, and I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful um, afternoon, evening, day, night, whenever you see this, and uh, we will see you later.